In this video, I'd like to talk about the math question of the day for Thursday, May 11th, 2023. And with this problem, we need to state the amplitude, period, the vertical shift, and the phase shift of this trigonometric function, y is equal to minus 1 half the sine of x over 2. And since we're dealing with trigonometry, this type of question might come up at the end of an Algebra 2 with trig class, or you might see it in just a trigonometry class, or you might even see this in a pre-calculus class. So at this point, go ahead and pause the video, see if you can work through this on your own. And when you're ready, unpause the video and we can go through this together. Now, assuming that you have attempted the problem, let's start working through it. And when dealing with amplitude period and horizontal and vertical shifts, we need to know the general equation for a sinusoidal function. And we could write that as y is equal to a multiplied by the sine, or this would be true for the cosine as well, of b multiplied by x plus c, and then closing off the input, we have plus d on the outside. Now, relating it to these four concepts, the amplitude is related to this coefficient on the sine function, and actually the absolute value of this is equal to the amplitude. So we can say that the absolute value of a is the amplitude. We can say that our period is this coefficient b. We can say that b is related to the period. And really, we should be a little bit more careful. It might be better to say that the period is equal to 2 pi over that constant b, which will be the coefficient on x in the input. We could say that C is related to what's known as the phase shift. It has to do with horizontally shifting this sinusoidal function left or right. And if it's positive, it will actually shift it to the left. If it's negative, it shifts it to the right. The opposite of what you might expect, but horizontally shifting functions will go in the opposite direction. And then D has to do with the vertical shift. And D works the way you would expect. If you add, let's say, 3, it will shift the entire function up 3 units. If you subtract, it will shift everything down, however many units you're subtracting. So let's just compare what we have to this general equation. And we can see that our A value for this given equation, the coefficient on the sinusoidal part is this minus one half. But to find the amplitude, we're actually looking at the absolute value of A, so we'll make this positive. This will become positive one half. So our amplitude is one half. Compared to our parent function, if we write that in, that's just Y is equal to the sine of X, this function will be essentially squished by a factor of one half. And this negative will actually just cause a reflection. So it doesn't affect the amplitude, but it will reflect this function. You might remember the sine function generally looks like that. Let me try it a little bit better. It looks something like that. It goes through the origin. If it has this negative sign, that will reflect everything across the x-axis. But notice it won't affect the amplitude. The amplitude will still be the same. So that's why we look at the absolute value of this coefficient a. And next, we can notice that b, the coefficient on x, would be 1 half. So we can say b is a half. And if we plug that into our formula for the period, we can see that the period is 2 pi divided by b, or divided by a half. And since we're dividing by a fraction, that's the same as multiplying by this fraction flipped over. So we have 2 pi multiplied by 2 over 1, which is 4 pi. So the period of this is 4 pi. Essentially, 
compared to our parent function, it will just go twice as far in its oscillation. So it will look something like that. And notice that we're not adding anything to our input. We essentially have plus zero here, or we, in other words, do not have a C value. So we can say C is zero, and again, that's our phase shift. So in this case, we have no phase shift, and we're not adding or subtracting anything on the outside of our sinusoidal function. So we also have no vertical shift. D is also equal to zero. So to answer this question, we know the amplitude is one half, or it's half of the amplitude of our parent function here. So it will only go to half the height. And we know it's reflected, even though that's not explicitly asked for. We do know we have a reflection, and it's half the amplitude. So just with that information, it would look something like that. But we are also essentially horizontally stretching it since our period is twice as big as the period of our parent function. So if we wanted to graph this a little bit more accurately, it might look something like this.